Hello, it's Mr. Esty, and we're going to look at how we can take categorical data that's already been organized in a frequency table and how we can make that frequency table show two variables in relationship to each other. Now, in the project we're doing in my class, we're specifically doing this for a regular question variable on a survey such as what is your favorite breed of dog, and a demographic variable, such as what is your gender. So <clears throat> it's helpful here to choose a demographic variable that doesn't have too many values. That is, there aren't that many choices. For example, with gender, there are only so many genders that you're likely to get when you ask people for their gender. So that's a pretty good demographic variable to start with. If you do a demographic variable with lots of values, like what neighborhood in Philly do you live in, that is going to take a really long time to analyze. All right, let's focus on favorite dog breeds and gender. So first of all, I'm going to set up a data table that is very similar to the regular frequency tables that I have made in other videos. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to go to format and merge cells. So that's I highlighted this. I've highlighted the first row here, and I've gone to format, and I'm merging cells, and that's so that I can give it a title. So, rel. So here I could talk frequency of favorite dog breeds by gender. So now I. I've given my table a clear title. I've centered that title, bolded it. We should be ready to go. All right, so we already know how to populate a list of the categories. We, we want each of these categories to show up once. So we're going to use the unique formula. So we type in an equals to say we're doing a formula. We type in unique. And then it just wants to know what's the range of data we're using. So here we, we don't want to include B1 because that has the title. We just want to start at B2. And we want to go all the way down the B column. So unique B2 to B. And there we go. That's a list of all of the breeds of dog that are in that column. Now note this space right here is actually part of the unique list because there are empty spaces in here. And therefore, we don't want to type over this space. If I do that, as you see, I break my formula. Instead, I'm going to skip a line and just type total down here. And it's fine. We'll just leave this space here. It's not a big deal. All right, now that I have my categories, I know how to get the overall frequency already. That's a We've already gone over that. We can easily find how many of each dog breed was picked in this survey using the count if formula. So equals count if, and again, I'm going to put in B2 to B because I want, want that to be the range. And I'm also going to put in this, this cell right here, Doberman. That's E3. So I'll say count how many times something in this list matches this cell, matches Doberman. All right, and of course, before I fill, I'm going to also put a dollar sign in front of the two. That's going to hold the list here so that every time I copy and paste or fill this formula, it's going to keep B2 to B. E3, on the other hand, is going to keep moving. So when I fill this down, it will move from E3 to E4. So now it's covering German Shepherds but it's still covering from B2 down. It's not this part of the formula isn't moving at all, just the, e, just the E4 part. And then I'm going to keep doing that, and it will keep moving us down from German Shepherd to Poodle to Golden Retriever to Hound Dog and so forth, all the way down there. Okay, we have our regular frequencies, but we already knew how to do that. That's not very exciting. All right, now we want to know not just how many people picked Doberman, 
but how many people picked Doberman and said that they were female and listed their fe their gender as female? And there are a few ways to do that in just one formula. You can do it with an array formula in Google Sheets. You can also do it with the query language in Google Sheets. But both of those are pretty advanced and can get very confusing. So I'm going to show you a nice little <clears throat> easy mode version, a life hack with Google Sheets, as it were, and that's to create a helper column. So I'm going to insert a new column to the right of gender. And it's going to be a lot easier if I can just make a column where I have all of these answers, but only the answers from somebody who said their gender was female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a formula that tells the computer to copy from here to here if the gender is female, but if the gender is not female, to leave it blank. And that's going to be the if formula. So I type in if, and I put a parentheses. And what I want to tell the computer now is what has to happen in order... So basically, I'm going to ask the computer, check if something is true. And in this case, what we want to check is does this cell equal female? Now, we have to put quotation marks around the word female so that the computer recognizes it as a word. If it doesn't have quotation marks, it's going to think either there's a number there or a cell or a range or something like that. Maybe another sheet. So the quotation mark says, this is a word. Just check for this word. If you're checking for a number, then don't put quotation marks. If you're checking to match a cell, again, don't put quotation marks. This is only if you're typing a word. All right, so I'm telling the, the formula to check, is this cell going to say female? In this case, it's going to say, yes, it does. Now I put a comma. The next thing I need to tell the computer is, if this is true, what do I do? And the answer is, you print Doberman. You copy whatever is in cell B2. So if C2... If cell C2 is female, just copy what's in B2. Comma, and then this last thing that the computer wants to know is what should I do if this is not true? Which, as you can see, is not going to... Back in... Uh, when we copy this and paste it into cell D3, it's not going to be true. The gender is going to be male, not female. And so what we want the computer to do in that case is nothing at all. We're just going to leave it blank after the comma. And that's our formula. So if C2 equals female, in quotation marks, comma, B2, comma, nothing. And as you can see, so far the formula is working. It has printed Doberman in this column. Great. All right. Let's put it down. And as you can see, again, it's working because... This is a male respondent, and so we don't want to copy the male respondent's answer. We're only looking for female respondents. Now, I just want to show you what happens here if you don't put the second comma in. If you don't do that, then the computer will default to just saying false. In fact, if we didn't put any of this in, the computer, oh, the computer would break, but if we did that, it would default to saying false. Now, we don't want the computer to say false. We want the computer to do nothing. So that's why we put the comma and then just leave the formula blank afterwards. All right. From here, I can just fill down all the way to the end of the data sheet. And it's done. So what you see here is we have a list of favorite dog breeds, but only from female respondents. I'll pause here to note that this assumes that you kept every respondent's answers on the same row. If you mixed up the data in between collecting it and messing with it, then you don't know which respondents are female anymore, and you need to start over. You need to fix that. But assuming you kept all the rows intact, that's why we haven't been using the sort function here, because we don't want to mess up any of the rows. 
assuming you've kept the rows intact, this should work regardless of what value you're putting in. I could just as easily do this with mail. And in fact, let's do that. So let's insert another one. And so let's say this is the female. This is responses from female. And this will be responses from male respondents. Actually, that's a very long title. Let's just cut that out. OK. And we can very easily do this formula again. So equals if this, oops, if C2 equals male, then copy B2. If not, don't do anything. And in this case, because this was not a male respondent, we're not doing anything. And we go all the way down. And as you can see, it's offset. And you'll notice that there are still some rows that are empty, and that's because there were also some non-binary respondents. So here, we can put in a third column for non-binary respondents. And again, we'll just do the same thing. Equals if gender equals non-binary, copy that, copy B2, and don't do anything if it's not. And we'll fill down all the way again. And there we go. So now we have all three. I do want to note that if you are my student in my class doing this project, you only need to do one of these. These uh, You don't have to do all three. You might want to, to exceed expectations and have a thorough demographic analysis, but I'm only requiring you to do it once. All right, let's go over here and figure out how we make a table out of that. So we've made our helper column, and this helper column is going to make it much easier for us to find out the frequency of each favorite dog breed among just the female respondents. So we're just going to use the same thing as we did before, count if. We're going to count equals count if. But this time, instead of putting in B2 to B, we're going to use our helper column. That's going to be D2 to D. And we're going to put in Doberman again. And we're going to come back and we're going to put our dollar sign in front of the 2 so that it always starts at D2. And that will work. So what it's saying here is that there were three female respondents who said Doberman was their favorite breed. That's 1, 2, and 3. All right, that, that's correct. So far our formula looks like it's working. Let's fill it in all the way down. And you can take a uh, you can take your time when this is your data to go and check that, check a few of them manually, but I assure you I've already checked these and this is correct. We have our correct data. We have our frequency of choosing each breed for everyone and then the frequency which with which uh, people who said their gender was female chose each breed. And now we just have a few more parts of our table to fill in. We have our total, which we can easily find using the sum formula. So we're going to type equals sum, and then we're going to just put in the things we wanted to add up, which is all of this data. Boop, that's done. We can do the same thing over here. I'm going to accept the, the auto response here because it's doing what I want, which is to add up all of this. Just adding all of this up. And then here's the last part, the female percentage. So this part is a different kind of relative frequency. Instead of saying, how often did people choose this breed of dog compared to the total, we're going we're gonna to ask, what percentage of people who chose Doberman were female? And that's just a simple division problem. This number divided by that number, which we can go ahead and fill all the way down. And so 
What we can see here right away is that some breeds were much more popular among women than others. For example, nobody who said they were female said that Pugarino was their favorite breed. Nobody who was female said that their favorite breed was Small Wrinkler or Heckenbig Woofer. So on the other hand, we have a 100% rate of female of female genderedness under people who love hound dogs, people who 80% uh, for poodles, 75% for Dobermans. So that the fact that these percentages are very different indicates that gender might make a big difference for our type of data. You know, that if we're doing some kind of analysis on whether gender affects people's favorite dog breed, the fact that these percentages are often very far away from even tells us that we might be onto something. Of course, with tiny little numbers like these, given how small the frequencies are, we're, uh, I wouldn't be making some big grand statement about this. We maybe wanted a bigger sample size than we got for this survey in order to make any kind of authoritative conclusions. But still, it's going to be useful. Uh, it's, good, it's useful to be able to at least see that maybe, maybe gender does matter for this question. Maybe. Of course, we can use the sum formula here as well. And you're just going to notice that when we put that as a percent, that's not what we want. So you're also going to notice that when we put these in as percentages, they're not going to add up to 100%. And that's because these are not all from the same whole. Each of them is from a separate population, the population of people who picked these breeds as their favorite. So there's no reason why we'd expect them to add up to 100%. Incidentally, that's also a good reason why you shouldn't make a pie chart for these data, because this data right here, we've been dividing it into separate pieces, separate buckets, based on which dog people chose, and then we've been finding the relative frequency of that, that dog breed being favored by people who said that their gender was female. That is not the kind of situation where a pie chart is appropriate. When we want to graph that, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is just highlight these two to tables, and we can insert a chart and we will get the chart we want. We'll get this chart, which we then might want to work with a little bit. First of all, you're going to notice that this chart is messed up because I included total, and I shouldn't do that. So I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'm going to go down to this chart where I didn't include total. And you notice how this, this is a much nicer, a much nicer scale where I can see everything. It only goes up to four, which is the highest amount for Poodle. I can see all of the different categories clearly. However, I do have a lot of categories and some of their names are very long, have a lot of letters. So this actually is a situation where I might rather use a horizontal bar chart. And in Google Sheets, I do that just by going to bar chart. In fact, Google Sheets calls a regular bar chart a column chart for some reason. So just by going to bar chart, I can get my chart to go horizontal, and that gives me plenty of room for all of the dog breeds to have their names spelled out clearly. 